Okay, so I am starting with the biggest sphere that is closest to me, and I am working from dark to light. So I'm looking for any areas on there that are dark areas. So I'm talking about little shadows or form shadow most likely. On mine, because I'm doing a fruit, there's a little bit of a stem, so there is a little bit of a cast shadow on the actual object itself. So I'm going there first, and I'm not using black. I'm using kind of a brown with red-violet mixed in. So it's not pure black. If you do use black, which you can, I would suggest you add another color to it to give it some flavor. This method of doing the form shadow first works really well. And most artists tend to work from dark to light. And there is a reason for it. Um, the reason is to avoid like murkying your colors and to also see uh, the contrast between the darks and the lights. So I'm working dark to light here. I'm doing the form shadow first. And remember that form shadow is the shadow that's actually on the object itself. And the thing about the form shadow that you'll remember from uh, last semester is that the form shadow is always going to be a soft transition. It's a, it's a gradual shift shadow. It's slowly turning into the dark, into the shadow side. So it's not going to be like a cast shadow, which is a little bit sharper, a little bit more crisp edge. This is going to be a soft edge. So there's the form shadow. I'm going to transition up towards the mid-tones. So remember those value scales that we've been doing and the ones we've done in the past. It has to be a smooth transition. And because I'm doing a persimmon, a persimmon is bright orange, kind of glossy a little bit. So I'm going to be doing a kind of a red orange plus some brown in there. So you can make brown a number of ways. One way to do it is orange and blue or orange and black can work too. I'm using orange and blue. There's some definite reds in there too. So I'd say the form shadow you ought to be able to nail really well. The only one that's a little bit difficult is if you're doing an object that is yellow. Yellow can be a little bit tricky. I mean, if you just add yellow and black together, you're going to be getting this army green color, which probably won't work that effectively for your form shadow. I would warm up that shadow a little bit by adding some red to it, or you can add some brown. We have a full palette now, so you can add some other colors to it. So remember when you're doing a sphere, you are modeling that sphere. You want to think of it as a 3D object, just like if you were to take a piece of clay right now and roll it into a ball. You really want to think about your strokes kind of wrapping around the form. So contour line kind of. So brushwork here is important to kind of get the suggestion of the form. If you were to paint this all one direction with your stroke, like if you were to go up and down, it would be a very flat object. So what I'm looking for is transitions and I'm looking for you to really curve your brush stroke around the form. And I just want to remind you when you're doing this type of brush work, you're doing short strokes. I'd say no more than an inch. That's probably on the long side. These are shorter strokes. So I'm trying to get some yellow in there. I'm looking at my reference picture too because that helps me out. So you can see that there's a clear progression as you, you move from the right side, which is in shadow, and you gradually shift to the lighter side, which happens to be a little bit warmer. The um, shadow side is a little bit cooler in temperature. And that spot there is because I'm leaving room for my highlight. Now you want the highlight to kind of sit on there like a melted pat of butter. You want it to blend in on the seams too, so it just melts in. Picture like a pancake, butter sitting on a pancake, kind of melt into the form. Otherwise, it's going to be floating on top of your form, on top of your sphere, and it's going to look weird. And remember, we're painting these multiple, multiple times. So right now, I know this is not the best I can do, but it's the start. It's the start, I'm, I'm starting to get the illusion of 3D. Is it all the way 3D? Of course not, it's the beginning. So on mine, there is this interesting kind of stem. These are dried leaves, so they're going to be kind of this brownish green 
what's called a mute, really. So a mute is a color where you take two complements and mix them together, and it creates this kind of muddy green color. So I, I used um, kind of a yellow ochre color. We have a color that's kind of yellow-brown. And you add to that a little bit of blue and a little bit of red. So that's what I was doing there. You might have something like that too. Um, I'm just looking at it and comparing value to value. So I'm comparing the leaf value to the value of the actual object, the persimmon in, in this case. And I'm going, okay, where is it lighter? Where is it darker? I'm constantly trying to do that. And it may not be 100% at this stage, but I'm going to work towards that. So I went ahead and worked a little bit off camera on those far distant spheres. So again, I'm using the same colors because they are going to be the same fruit. Um, I was working on curving my brush stroke, wrapping it around the form. Those gaps are for the um, highlight to be and also for the stem to be placed. So again, you're going thin with your brushwork. You're curving your, your stroke around the form and you're trying to get kind of soft edges in most places for the time being. So kind of fuzzy, soft edges for right now. It's okay to have some hard edge, edges, like you can see on my main one, on the shadow side, there's a little bit of a crisp edge. You just don't wanna have all over um, sharp edges. That's gonna flatten your form. Also, I wanna point out that if you're doing spheres that are off into the distance, they should be a little bit lighter in color, not quite as intense as the one that's closest to you. As things go back in space, they get a little bit um, more muddled, which means like a little bit more out of focus and a little bit lighter. So we've talked about that in terms of landscape and we'll be talking a lot more about it as we progress into like landscape painting. But as things go back, they get, tend to pale out a, a little bit. This is what my painting looks like after the first layer. So this is pretty much like the first phase of the painting process. There's gonna be multiple layers, and as I build up the layers, I'm going to be working on increasing the volume of the forms. I'm also going to be working on the depth, so pushing things farther back and bringing things forward. So this is all stuff that's gonna come and develop as I continue with this painting later on. Same with yours.